All right, uh, so I'm Catherine Lefner. For those of you that I haven't met, and most of you, I'll recognize your faces. And I'm so glad that you're here today. And we do have um, the, the county engineer as well as the project manager here to talk about this project and where it stands today. And I think we all have maybe good questions. So we'll let them do their presentation. It's already lined up to go. And uh, you want to start? Mr. Benchetti, he's new to us in the area. Come on up. Maybe we can, by the way, you can walk around like this. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and she's going to pull it up for you. It should be up there now. Is no, no, it's just our agenda. Okay, I have fine when I took a head of the page yet. Let's try to get to where I got it. How's that? You got it now. How about that? Yeah, that's what we, yes, that's great. We got the first slide there. Good. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Good evening. Um, my name is Vinod Sanchetti. I'm the project manager for Capital Projects with Sarasota County. Uh, Could you get a little closer to the microphone? He's yeah. holding it. Yeah. yeah, if you don't hear me, please raise your hand. But I'm, I'm trying to speak up. Yeah, okay, into the speaker. There you go. Thank you. Um, so this project is the uh, proposed roundabout, and it's on the intersection of Beach Road and the Midnight Pass Road. And the uh, we're going to go to a few of the uh, bullet points. On this project, as you see, the overview of the project uh, three uh, approaches one from the uh, north, uh, from the Midnight Pass Road, and going uh, east south direction. And then on the uh, west side, we have the left is the uh, Beach Road, and this is the uh, the uh, how the roundabout is going to be uh, constructed. And we have some of the updates on uh, the status. Uh, so we started advertising for the construction bids in January of this year. And we have received the bid and they are bid being evaluated. And we're uh, reviewing with the uh, FDOT, which is Florida Department of Transportation uh, for approval. And then, uh, so we're expecting to uh, start the uh, construction sometime in June. That is the current projection. And uh, we're also intending to hold a public meeting prior to beginning of the construction, uh, which uh, listed second bullet point uh, in May of 24. And we'll give you more update as things develop and we know more definitively uh, on these dates and the uh, whenever the traffic uh, phasing control traffic control phasing what's called MOT uh, maintenance of traffic will be uh, going through uh, various phases of routing the traffic while uh, part of the construction is being done so one leg at a time and we'll build that and then move the traffic over so any given point in construction during all the phases of the MOT, will there will always be uh, a two-way traffic maintained uh, during the construction, and uh, also for the pedestrians and bicyclists will be uh, uh, crossing uh, during the uh, those uh, MOT phases. So there will always be uh, crosswalk. And pedestrian uh, walkways will be uh, available to uh, cross uh, the area. And the last point we have is the funding for the construction, which is being funded by FDOT and FHWA, which is the Federal Highway Administration. And the construction will be managed by the Sarasota County Capital Projects. Myself and our construction group will be handling uh, the uh, the construction of the project. So moving on to the second, okay, here we are. So this shows kind of in a graphical and some uh, letters we use for locations and how we're proposing the design features for the uh, safety of 
pedestrians and bicyclists that was the uh, big emphasis uh, during the design process. And uh, I guess I can point to these, but if you can see uh, A, B, C, D, basically what, what that does is uh, the location A, reduce pedestrian conflict point. So as you come up, uh, approach the uh, roundabout, the pedestrian crossing is just before the, uh, the roundabout uh, on, on three uh, legs. And you cross halfway and you come up to uh, the splitter island, and then you can uh, either take a refuse or a stop for a while, and then you cross. So the distance for pedestrian to cross is going to be shorter and will be a quick uh, crossing. Uh, we also have what's called item B, is the rapid rectangular flashing beacons and they're uh, controlled crosswalks and the pedestrian or bicyclist can push the button and these flashing lights will be on and motorists can see that and they will stop for pedestrian to cross and we have seen this on some of the uh, roundabouts uh, near the university town center there are three of them uh, so that gives you an idea how that's that will work uh, they do have the similar uh, the flashing beacons and pedestrian to uh, push the button and cross. Uh, the point C here is the sidewalk. So we have a wider sidewalk, 10 foot wide around the roundabout, and they connect to the uh, existing sidewalks uh, on all of these uh, roads. Um, there are bike ranch. So there is a entry for, I mean, there is a, a bike ramp where you can get on from the road to the sidewalk and then again go on to the sidewalk and cross the road, just like a pedestrian would, just walk your bike and you can cross. So there is a safe entry into the sidewalk and a wider sidewalk that will take care of both um, pedestrian and bicyclists. And that's on all three legs. Um, and I mentioned about the item E, which is the shorter crosswalk to the splitter islands. And we have the uh, two lanes uh, and divided with the splitter islands. And uh, there's paved shoulders. They're wider also. So it gives you some room between the uh, travel lane and the, uh, the adjacent area for the uh, uh, sidewalk. Uh, so there will be some uh, uh, paved shoulders. And we're also, um, we have designed the street lighting uh, around the roundabouts. It will be uh, enough lighting for the uh, traffic and also for pedestrians, uh, bicyclists, to be able to see the area here. Um, and then roundabout helps to uh, slow down, but it keeps it moving. The traffic moves, uh, unless there is something um, Unforeseen or something happens, then you slow down and yet there will be some things like that and there will be inconvenience during the construction as you can expect, but we're going to maintain the traffic flow uh, throughout the uh, duration of the construction. Uh, so that is our brief summary, but I did uh, go through some of the uh, anticipated questions and I may can do that before you even get the questions, right? Mm -hmm. So if we go through that, a uh, quick uh, background on the project. Uh, there was a study by EPTOT and then later on with the county also uh, comparing the signalized intersection and the roundabout and compared both alternates and the roundabout was concluded to be more efficient. That would offer uh, more advantages over the signalized intersection and also the community survey finding also showed uh, the uh, preference for the roundabout and what it does it, it includes the conversion of the signalized intersection to a new single lane roundabout with the added lane uh, going from um, beach or eastbound so there will be a faster uh, entry and exit through the uh, roundabout. So we added that lane uh, in addition to our circulatory uh, lane. Uh, then of course the project has the bicycle lanes, the sidewalks, the crosswalks, the drainage improvements, the lighting, 
landscaping, signing and pavement marking. And the uh, there is one uh, thing special feature is going to be the preemption signals for the fire station for the emergency response. So they'll be able to control when there is an emergency, they can come in to the roundabout and they control a push button from the uh, fire station to be able to make it red for the traffic to stop. And uh, whoever is in the uh, circle in the roundabout will be able to clear and then the emergency vehicle will have a clear way to get out of the <laughs> roundabout. Um, so we talked about the construction. Uh, approximately we we're talking about June. Uh, how long will it take? So the, the duration is 12 months and we're trying to get some incentive in place. So if the contractor can finish early and we're trying to uh, target for three months early completion, if that works out, you know, it depends on how the weather goes and if there are any delays or anything during weather, but there is a effort to try to improve uh, the construction duration. And the cost wise, you know, we have some bids come in uh, and then uh, there are over, of course, the estimate. Uh, at this point, the construction costs have gone up. So we're looking at over $8 million for the construction of all the improvements yeah. with the roundabout. And of course, there will be uh, a um, review and approval of the full uh, funding by the FDOT and FHWA, as I mentioned before. Uh, some of the concerns, you know, people think the roundabout may be confusing, difficult to drive. Uh, not really once you get uh, through the learning curve, but most people probably have around being in the Sarasota area or driving here, we have many roundabouts through the city and the county areas. Um, and there is some uh, federal highway has some safety comparison between roundabout and signalized. And their statistics show a 90% reduction in the traffic fatalities. That's the biggest thing. Um, there's 75% reduction in the uh, injury crashes and the 37% total reduction in the crashes. So that's that history and uh, has been uh, published and you can you can you know, check that anywhere, but that's, that's the safety of the arm part. Um, the pedestrian traffic we mentioned during construction, the answer is yes. The construction phasing will accommodate pedestrian crossing during every phase of construction. Did we need any additional right of way uh, to build the roundabout? No, we didn't. And we fit the roundabout design configuration within the existing right of way and still be able to accommodate extra length. Um, as far as the uh, provision for any, some question came up as far as the supplemental signal to control the traffic uh, in the roundabout, and that is not advisable and not uh, actually may not be safe either, but uh, the purpose of the signal here is only for the uh, emergency signal uh, I mean, preemption signal for the emergency vehicles. Other than that, roundabout is supposed to uh, remove the signals, and that's what we're doing is converting the signal into the roundabout. So, uh, but there are other features for the vehicles to uh, yield, and the rules of the roundabout to uh, yield to the pedestrians and uh, the vehicles which are in the uh, in intersection. Uh, within the roundabout. So those are some of the things, you know, maybe later on uh, we may show the uh, how the roundabout functions. There are some videos on that uh, by uh, FDOT. So, uh, but not today, I guess we don't have time, to come, but maybe some other time. Um, but they've been operating successfully at many locations similar to this, or congested areas and the city limits and sometimes near the beach location through the uh, state of Florida. Um, and then we talked about the uh, uh, RRFB, which is the rapid rectangular passing beacons uh, for the uh, safe crossing. Uh, will the roundabout improve the traffic flow? And yes, it will keep the traffic moving. That's the intent. And that's how the roundabout is supposed to function. 
it's more efficient over the uh, signalized intersection, improve the safety. Uh, other question maybe, uh, will I have the access to my um, condos or house or businesses? And yes, the access will be maintained and it's not going to be changing. So yes, that is the, uh, that is the answer on that. Uh, will there be lighting? Yes, there will be light poles and the light fixture. What was that one again about? It won't be changing. Uh, there won't be any change with the existing access to any of the residences or businesses. So they are the same where they are. And uh, we'll continue to maintain that through the construction as well. Could we could we um, stop for just a minute and see? There's a, one of our commissioners is here, Mark Smith, who's our commissioner, and I wanted to have an opportunity for some of them to ask questions yeah. while he can still be with us. They, some folks may have questions that you haven't thought about, and there's somebody right behind you, Mark. Um, I couldn't see because you got backlit back there. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Actually, two parts. One, you keep talking about roundabouts are safe, safer in terms of accidents and fatality. Could you please provide SKA so they can distribute it, the accident data for that intersection for the last five years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to do that too. Yeah. Do, do we have that? Yeah. Okay, sure. great. Okay. It'll be for, we, we probably don't have it within the past year, uh, but the previous years we can provide okay. five. The yeah. five years of data that we have, we can provide. Okay, great. Yes. Yes. And the majority of traffic is going to be going midnight past the beach road. That typically is the, the route. We typically come down midnight past wait at the light and then go down midnight path. With that continuous flow of traffic, what's the ramifications on midnight paths coming south? You're gonna be waiting for cars to go around the roundabout and you're never gonna have a, a gap because of the continuous flow. Has any consideration been given to that? that? No, the expectation is that there will be uh, some, some there will be always some gap coming up where the flow is uninterrupted. If you come, signal you will stop and go to the roundabout. You're coming south on midnight pass road, making a right turn on the beach road. That's what you're talking about. Left turn to continue on midnight pass. Yeah. Oh, left turn going back. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there, there are like a two lanes. It opens up into two lanes. So um, there will be either. Uh, Left, left of the lane or the right lane can get into either one of those uh, to get onto the uh, midnight pass of continuation. Yes, I have, I have two questions. Um, first of all, one of the questions was how many accidents. I'd like to know that because I live there. And I've hardly seen any accidents for eight years that I that I've lived there. Um, we live at. Uh, on Beach Road, uh, to get on out of Beach Road and to get to Midnight Pass is impossible now. With lights, it's almost impossible. With continuous traffic, oh. we'll never get out of our community. We could never make a left out of our community. Our left turn would be immediately to the lower left of what you show at Beach, Beach Road. See, right. so we live around the lake. D D area D, around D, but but you know a, a little bit a little bit uh, north of D. It's up right there. opposite. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. up there. Yeah. Yeah. To, to get out now with lights is almost impossible, especially during season, which is now getting longer and longer. Now it's February till April. With a roundabout, when there will be no traffic <laughs> being stopped. I can't see how we could ever leave our community and make a left turn and go up midnight pass hmm. ever. Uh, I guess a question I would have related to that is if there is a pedestrian area crosswalk a little further uh, north there, would that be a place where a light could be? Can you hear me? All right. No. The, the question is if we can't get, she's concerned about getting out of their community. But if there's a pedestrian crosswalk because of the church and all the other areas down there, would that push button stop the traffic so that they it could be in sync with people who need to get out? That that's a question, and I don't know how uh, you would work. Exit, yeah, is is not near E. 
which would be the pedestrian walk. Mm -hmm. It's okay. you know uh, for the it's in the lower left hand okay. corner. It's of the further. Screen. I see right yeah. here. Just off. Okay. Yes. Just yeah. Just where you are. B after E. Yeah. So there, if there's, we're not going to be able to leave our community and make a left. It's hard enough to make a right out of our community now because mm -hmm. of traffic. And it's stopped at times. Now it will not be stopped. It will be continuous traffic going. Um, and the, my second question is, what surveys are you talking about saying that the people of CSD Key especially want this roundabout? I've gone to meetings for... I would say five years about this, and maybe more. Yeah. Uh, and at every meeting, anyone, especially who lives on Siesta Key, has said, we do not want a roundabout. Mm -hmm. The lights were fine. Yeah. It's going to be more dangerous for bicyclists and walkers. Mm -hmm. We have many roundabouts in Sarasota, but we don't have the amount of bikers and walkers that we had here. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't listen, they don't even pay attention to the lights now. They, and there are accidents with bikers. Uh, how is that going to work for us? I don't understand what survey you're talking about saying that um, CSDT wanted. Yeah, you. that was the survey was conducted and there was uh, many responses and they uh, analyzed that and the roundabout has overall score of 33% uh, compared to signalized intersection was around 30%. 33% so is saying that we want a roundabout. 33%. How many responses did you get? I mean, there were about 552 uh, online survey responses. And they were all recorded and references were noted. Would it be like 50% or higher that wants the roundabout than a third of the people who voted want a roundabout? Gene has that on the slide. Uh, also, that's a good question. Right, be right behind you. Do you want to ask a question before you go? Because I know you have to leave. So, have you done a study throughout the year about you know with our roundabout and observed what takes place in CSDP? Have you done that throughout the year? An observation, a video showing the roundabout how it works for us. And well, that was it. Been done throughout the year. Yeah, okay. A start. Well, they they were, with observation. Spencer is going to answer. Hmm. Yeah. I'll try. I can help out the window here a little bit. Uh, my name is Spencer Anderson. I'm the county engineer. You guys have probably seen me here many a times before. Uh, and your questions, yes, we understand there is some opposition to the roundabout. We understood that and. We asked the county commission what they wanted to do. And at the time, the county commission asked us to go out and do a survey to this effect. So we brought them this information and showed them what it was. And the county commission made the decision, this is back in 2020, to proceed with the roundabout. And so we did that. It's, it's a decision that's been made. We spent a lot of money doing that. And that's the project that the, the DOT and the county are, are cooperatively working on. I understand the opposition. And we are asking for your patience, understanding, and while the project is improved, mm -hmm. and hopefully uh, at the end of the day, just like many other roundabout projects, we have a lot of folks who opposed it to begin with and can can deal with it after this. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, I, I hear you. Yes, I hear you, and I appreciate you working with us and being patient while we make these improvements. What are you going to do when it doesn't work out? <laughs> well, yeah. well it, 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 if there are things that we can determine, there Thank could be you. an evaluation to look at in process. It's something we did uh, on another roundabout in the county where there were some issues going on, and we looked at that afterwards. It was actually another cooperative project with the DOT, and we made some retrofitted changes to that, and they've actually done really well coming out of it. So there are always things that we can do um, to, to look at something if it's not operating as we had intended for it to. Uh, you know, uh, some folks have said we need to signalize a certain approach on the roundabout. Those are things that can always be looked at after the fact. It is not the best practice. We have over 20 roundabouts in Sarasota County. One of them has one signal on one approach. And that's only because it's very close proximity to another full signalized intersection it's within probably you know 200 yards of a full uh, fully signalized intersection. So it was to control congestion through the roundabout and the other approaches of the roundabout. 
similar to what you might have going on here with southbound traffic on, I'm sorry, east, eastbound traffic on Beach Road uh, to Midnight Pass. Yeah. What? Go ahead. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, my concern is pedestrian safety. Um, I've lived here for there are over 30 some years. Um, the people are, are the new crosswalks going to have the same lighting system that we have now? Yes, you, you should be familiar with what goes on on Beach Road. It'll be exactly familiar. the same. And I'm telling you, <laughs> there are more cars that go through it. Yes. Once the people are already in the crosswalk, mm -hmm. and now you are going to have many people coming from uh, Midnight Pass. And I, I don't see, I'm totally against the roundabout. Mm -hmm. And I'm you're going to have all this traffic. And I live at our house at the beach. And I can see where our people that have the driveway coming out of the lake houses, there is no way they are ever going to break into that traffic. Mm -hmm. We get a break now because we have cars turning into the uh, beach parking lot. Right. And I'm the other side from going into our home. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I wish you would have a survey of how many cars go through those lights. Oh, we, we know the volume that you're doing. Yeah, I would actually. But it's downtown, around about compared to 20 the year before that was in the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, just the, the, the history here. of determining that the roundabout was the, the best alternative. The DOD did a very big, thorough analysis of the signalization, the volumes, and when they do this, it's called an intersection control evaluation. And they went through that process and determined based on the location, the volumes, the pedestrian traffic, and all the conditions at that intersection that the roundabout was the preferred alternative. Initially, they backed off of it because of a lot of the comments we're hearing tonight. And when, you know, that was, gosh, 2014 or right. so, it was a while yep. ago. Yes. And so the county had installed, the county and city had installed several roundabouts since then. And the opinion of, of some of the people in the county had changed enough that I took it back to the county commission and asked them to reconsider this when it came back up several years later. And now what happens when all this traffic goes through the village and we are piling up already with the little roundabout that you put at Hydro <laughs> and you know, at the end of the village there? There's already backups and we and then you have the light. So how that roundabout for me is useless because you get through the roundabout and then the traffic light changes on Hydro and um, Midnight Pass Road. And I really don't see the safety. Yes. And now you have pedestrians and bicyclists, uh, the cyclists going to be crossing at the same time. Correct. Bicyclists should be part into the round into the sidewalk and they go through a roundabout. That's the, the, the preferred alternative. However, a lot of them do go through with the with the vehicular vehicular track. Do you consider a pedestrian bridge over the <laughs> no sir? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm with uh, White Sands Village next door, where I'm a consultant for the board, and um, I will be overseeing our portion of this construction where it involves us. Currently, we have uh, over 600 feet of our uh, irrigation is going to be taken out when the new sidewalks are put in. Okay. And my understanding is that you're going to put new irrigation along the edge of the new sidewalk. And is it, am I correct to assume the county is going to supply that water to those sprinkler heads where we supply them out from our well? Um, is that correct? I have other questions related to that. But I, I do correct that water is going to be supplied by the county. I, I think what maybe bet. Um, I'm going to take this initially. That's probably not correct because that's not. We don't do. We don't irrigate private uh, rights away, or we don't irrigate air anywhere in the county on our own on our own cost. So what it might be best to do is uh, get one of our cards so we can coordinate that that specifically with your team. Okay, I met with this gentleman a week and a half ago. Okay, our board members. Good. The prints show you have four zones out there. Okay, and it gives the times. 
how many minutes every week those zones are going to be feeding those sprinkler heads. So I'm assuming you're going to be supplying the water to those sprinkler heads. Okay, it, it may be. That's why I said, I, I, why don't we talk offline? It sounds like you guys have already talked about it a little bit. And then maybe we may, our landscaping plan may be requiring irrigation where we don't typically do that. We may be for this project. Okay, another question related to that. Assuming you do supply the water to those new sprinklers, and then we just cap our system down out there. For future maintenance, do you turn that step? Those sprinkler heads on our property over to us for future maintenance. We won't be calling the county if we got a broken head. We call our own people to do the work. Is that correct? If it's on your property, that would be appropriate. Well, it's in the right of way that. Yeah, right. I, I just don't know enough these. I can't. I can't speak intelligently. Yeah. So it'd be better if we Let's got. Let's keep it on. We got big question. There's a gentleman here. Like yeah. That. yeah. There's something to sign between the county and the owners. No doubt. You were you're you're saying signing up over to us to repair in the future. Right. Mm -hmm. So yes, definitely we need to talk about that offline. Okay. I want to make sure to get level. this gentleman May here. I yield to the yeah. gentleman oh, to my yeah. uh, all right. All right. Thank Quickly. You. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank I you. Think, uh, I think I'm right about this. Could that you survey? Could you speak three, up three, the question? Yeah. Three, you can respond to three three options. One was this one, the roundabout. Yeah. Another one was don't touch the signal, it's just fine. And another one was make minor changes to the signal. Right. Those were the three. Right. Mm -hmm. Improve. Right. 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 Okay. 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 So the truth of the matter is better than clearly better than 50% did not want this roundabout. So when right. people are saying to you, you know, look, the bulk of the people on this feet don't mm -hmm. like the idea. Just That's because of the location. Anyway, yeah. I haven't been anyway. Yeah. You, you we did. We had that conversation with the county commission. We were very clear that, I mean, this is the slide we talked about with the county commission. I had the presentation with them. I was very clear about the results. And all the things you're bringing up that was, were discussed as issues with the data that we received. Yes, you can keep that. Right? The, the, yeah. the board decided to move forward with the roundabout. Look, you may not want to acknowledge it, but it is a decision that has come and passed. 75 right. So 75 percent of the people on the key didn't want it. Didn't make a difference. That's what that data says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah. so it's a cram down right. for the people on the key. Yeah. So let's just, I mean, that's what the data, data says. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a decision that has come and gone. And well, we'll see. <laughs> first of all, you first of all, <laughs> way, way over budget, so somebody's got to convince them to spend more money. So this is true, and it's certainly true that people on CSP yeah. can see CSP oh, okay. can say, Here's a bunch of things the transportation related. You're going to spend five million dollars, do these, yeah, and get them to have done. Mm -hmm. So we can be proactive and stop this thing if this madness, which appears to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the funding for this project either goes to this or goes to something somewhere else. It's not going to be something that's there for the boundary. People on the key would love that. Yeah. 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 But, but, that's not a threat to right. us. Jim, right. how about this fellow right here? Because yeah. he's been waiting for a while. We have please ask a number of factual questions for it, if you don't mind. What is the anticipated speed limit through what has been demonstrated here? What will be the speed limit? The, through the roundabout? Yeah. The whole McGill. Okay. Right. From point. D to point F and up uh, to point, point F again. The whole thing you've got to demonstrate there. What is the speed limit? So the uh, speed on the road, beach road or the midnight pass road, is not going to change. It's going to stay. It's going to stay 35. But when you come to roundabout, it's going to down to 25 miles per hour. Over how long a distance will that uh, be announced uh, after the 35 mile an hour area of entering? I gather what you are speaking of there. Mm -hmm. How much? What do you got? Three hundred yards, two hundred yards, fifty feet, ten feet. What? What's up? Because honestly, one of the prime things I've noticed in my observations going down Beach Road and Midnight Pass is they are maintaining far greater than that if they can, or they are crawling or snails. That actually has some merit to it because people will be polite and yield to people mm -hmm. who have to turn into driveways and sometimes cross traffic. Mm -hmm. What is the width of say the segment uh, you've got down in your lower, uh, to us it's the lower right hand corner is your, yeah, there you go. 
uh, uh, entering, entering, I guess, from the south end there. What is the width of that lane for crack, for, for, for automobiles? There's nothing unusual. It's 20 it's feet? It's typically. somewhere between 10 and 12 feet. Oh. It is. Okay. And are there concrete barriers between the outside of that lane and any of the pedestrian or bicycle ways? Correct. There's curb and then there's uh, concrete splitters on those, we call them pork chops, that are in the middle of, of the roadway there that lead up to the roundabout, the circular roundabout itself. Pork chops, pork chops meaning how high a barrier is that? be three to four inches. So that's not a barrier, sir. That no, derives no, no it's just protection. Six inches. Mm -hmm. six inches. Yeah. That'd be designed as standard, yes. Mm -hmm. so I, I, may I suggest, I like the design, although that certainly is a circle uh, in the center, <laughs> but uh, I think you're vastly underfunded. You really want to do this right? It ought to be two lanes around the center and two lanes coming into it, et cetera. And if you have to condemn and pay off somebody for some of the property that was <clears> used, <throat> then you got something. If they want to put all the stuff that Benderson and others want to have on this island for hotels, can you imagine what travel through that area is going to be? And you condemn me as an owner since 1988 at Gulf and Bay on the seaside. You condemn me basically to always have to take a right hand turn out of there because I haven't heard anything about preserving the existing turn lanes, which are a godsend at this stage of the game. Spencer, Thank you very much. yeah. When I could I make sure we only have a couple of minutes sure. left, and there is one other person back there that I know has a great question because we've been with him other meetings and we know he has good questions. And then Bob has one he must ask you. So okay. let, let, let me just on yeah. the yeah. Turn lane. So we did one of the things that we added a while ago, a couple of years ago, when we first started bringing this up and the board approved it, was to add in the eastbound left turn on the northbound midnight path. So there's a separate lane, there's a through lane, eastbound to westbound, I'm sorry, westbound to eastbound beach to midnight, and then the the eastbound to northbound turn on the midnight pass. There's two lanes that come through there. So there, there is a separated lane for the through, and then there's a separated lane for the left turn on to north. So that path. distance, say, from C to the center, mm -hmm. uh, as demonstrated. There's now, two lanes there. Yeah. Yes. There's two, two lanes. lanes. And, right. and is that uh, nominally uh, 40 feet? Would it be 20 feet? 22 feet or something like that. Yes. It's, it's actually a little bit wider in there uh, because it just, it's for the emerging aspect as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's one gentleman there, and then we can probably take one more after him. Thank you. The, uh, I'm, I'm uh, make a comment and then ask a question. Um, that uh, uh, so I'm generally in, in, in favor of roundabouts, uh, but history will tell us roundabouts are successful when people are knowledgeable about how to maneuver, as I mentioned earlier. But this, this is a fairly unique situation because there's so many uh, individuals that come down to visit. And 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 there's so many pedestrians that are uh, are new in the area. So the learning curve here is never going to ramp up as it would normally be for for round so, It's okay. simply not going to because people are going to be new to the area, coming to visit. It, it's, it's it's your expectation of the outcome in this situation, and I'm generally in favor of roundabout. But in this situation, it's not going to be successful because there's going to be no significant learning curve because of the number of individuals that are going to be new to the new to the area. It, 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 I think the traffic will back up in, in, in at least two directions up uh, up Beach Drive and down the Night Pass Road. Uh, and, and and that will block up the continuation of the night pass road. So uh, I would not anticipate a significant learning curve, but I think you're going to find that out. Um, and so uh, let me just uh, a couple of questions I got. First of all, the, the question one of the questions were already asked about the accident information that that's really 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 important. I think it'd be also helpful to know the traffic count from each direction and, and by time of day. Um, and so that you're going to end up getting a sense of what that traffic really is coming in there because you're going to end up finding that the, that traffic is not consistent and in, 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 at a peak level. Mm -hmm. As well as pedestrian traffic, yeah. there's a lot of times when a lot of pedestrian traffic goes through, <laughs> through it you know, a couple of times a day. And 
And, and unfortunately, that we may not end up with a, you know severe fatalities, but we we are going to end up with a number of deaths and accidents. So I appreciate you your listening to me, but uh, I I don't think we're going to have the type of one that really is really good position. And those are just the most problem. Right. And just a couple points, uh, and the learning curve. So this is a beach community, lots of tourists, and and we did a little bit of research over the past couple of weeks on where are some other similar locations. So Clearwater Beach has a a six approach roundabout uh, right at clear the front of Clearwater Beach on uh, their intersection there, and they're a very commercial area. Um, Panama City Beach is currently the only one almost identical to this. Um, Amelia Island has roundabouts up through. If you've ever been out there on just north of Jacksonville, they have several roundabouts in that area. Um, I vacation or have in the past up at Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, that has their main beach. Like this would be out right in front of our beach. They have one right there, very commercial, very touristy area. So it's, it's not a unique setting for a roundabout, but I do understand there's absolutely there to, to do roundabouts. Um, but they seem, people seem to be getting there. I mean, if you're coming from the route from the airport, you have to go through a multitude of roundabouts to get here to get 41. And there's like there's 20 and plus 20 plus roundabouts through the county. So that, that's good. The, for the pedestrian, um, the flashing lights, we do intend there will be a minimum delay between times that they'll activate. So if there's a group of people, they'll go off and they'll stop, and there'll be a minimum time before they can be lit again. So that's one thing to help the traffic get through and so you don't just have people keeping there pushing the button and they stay on forever. We have one more question for yeah. you then, Spencer. Okay, and, and just uh, one thing real quick on the yeah. crash data. There are a lot of crashes here. Don't expect to see data that we give you that show a lot of crashes. The data we're referencing is in regard to the, the, the comprehensive review of, of roundabouts and their performance with respect to fatal crashes and crashes with serious injury. Okay. Hi, Spencer. Thanks. Um, this is a pretty major investment, eight million dollars, plus the engineering that you've already done. Um, I guess I was wondering if you think this is going to be an improvement to the traffic on Siesta Key, and um, will it be an offset of some of the traffic that we're going to see as an increase as a result of the mega hotel developments? And Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So this project originated as an intersection improvement. It was uh, the, the the current configuration of the interstate of the intersection that DOT had was determined to not be ideal. Uh, there were a lot of conflict points. There were some hidden visibility areas where the median is out there for landscaping, and they were coming in with a intersection improvement project. All right, it was intended to one improve safety, two improve capacity. I do think that this will do both. I I don't know about the the, the hotels and things to that effect. The roads are already performing in a, a very constrained environment. These are constrained roadways in a constrained you know area. There's not much we can do to improve uh, capacity too much. A roundabout is a actually proven technique to improve capacity through an intersection. Actually, question. Question. Now, did you want to ask another question? I would make the statement. He would like sure, to sure, make sure. another comment just before you have yeah. to go. I guess um, the thing I would draw your attention to is the state of Florida comprehensive plan, section 19-12, uh, and it says avoid transportation improvements that encourage development in high coastal hazard areas. That's Siesta Key. So I think this is a violation of the state conference plan, and it's the intent of Siesta Key Association, I think, to inform FDOT before they improve your supplement to oppose this, that we're opposed to it. You understand? I understand. I think that's all we have. Okay. okay, thanks. Right. Um, you had another question. Neil had a question. Oh, Neil. There you are, Neil. Well, uh, my question picks up in the occurred before, but I think given the discussion, we've had a lot of questions from people today with the condominiums that are uh south on Midnight Pass and that E and F area and beyond. Those are all of us here to 
driven midnight past a sticky point or to the end of the key, and sometimes the traffic is going fall or doesn't move at all. And these people have expressed to us, but we heard a couple of people today say that it's very hard to get in now. The signal gives them some opportunity. So if there's continuous traffic, how are they ever going to get make a right hand turn or a left hand turn or left hand turn because you know, some would be virtually impossible. So so that's a big concern looking at the, even in an ideal situation that a lot of people still have. I know we've raised that to you before, so maybe you could address that again. I, I think it's a condition that we're gonna have to evaluate once the improvement goes in. And is there there are always retrofitted things that we can do with any project. And I think let's see how that works out. I think that we've had, a, I, I like the discussion. I really appreciate the interactive part of everything. And, and thank you so much for coming as we work you in. Jennifer, thank you so much for coming out as well. And I hope this traffic is good for you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, I'll see you. Take some, take some treats on the way home. Slower speed, uh, yeah, that's what makes the statistics I, the struggle be safer. Right. The statistics otherwise are very correct. We we had one question that I think that Spencer mentioned could be a possibility, and that is we'll put that on the record. Um, what would be the cost to retrofit or reverse some things that aren't working? And I and I think that's a good question. Uh, the small intersection that we have right now <clears throat> along Heidel, as it goes into Ocean Boulevard, is an example of that. That is not a permanent fit. I guess all of you know that. That those are temporary fillers there, and they wanted to take data on them to see how much difference it made. And after a few of us went off the road on the side that went into the ditch, they did increase the width of that road <laughs> a little bit, so people weren't dipping into it and knocking things down. But I think. That is going to be another question is can they do things that would allow an easy modification and I think including whether or not lights and timed uh, sequence walkovers so that you know how much more time you have. I, I wanted those. I like those. I know how much more time I've got to get somewhere or at least I have the choice of moving faster or not. And so these are all good questions and I think we'll keep those in the summary that we get from today's meeting. Jim, you want to yeah, just, I just want to make a point. <clears throat> we got better than 70% of the people on the key who don't they want better than 70% of the people on the key didn't want this and less than 50% off the key. That's what the data says. I'm sorry. Better than 70% of the people on the key right. didn't want the same. And, and less than 50% off the people off the key weren't didn't want the same. Furthermore, I think we have an option if we if we really want to try to stop this thing, thinking out loud with you guys. If we can make the argument that it's inconsistent with Siesta Key's current comprehensive plan, because as you pointed out, it's going to slow down traffic, and it's illegal to make any changes that reduce traffic flow on this key. That's what the Siesta Key comprehensive plan currently says. They're trying to change it, but that's what it says today. So we, we could make an argument to FDOT, you're approving something that the people don't want, neither on the key, off the key, and you're adversely affecting the comprehensive plan. Let's try it. We got enough. We can run, we'll get a lawyer to help us write that out. Okay. okay. And it needs to come from you guys. Yeah, you, you heard Bob's statement, and it is a very important detail. And of course, one that we've all been alerted to because of the hotels in particular. So it doesn't seem that they could be responsive to the fact that this is going to help us okay. if they come here. Sure. And in fact, okay. it may not be adequate. Yeah. And in fact, if you start one thing, really it just intensifies the problem. So I, I think we've got some things that have to choices, yeah. choice points. Yeah. Yes, no, yeah. literally. Yes or no. Yeah. And thank you for bringing that up. Sure. Was it FEMA that evaluated how quickly we can evacuate this <laughs> barrier island here? In the event of a of a, a disaster or whatever or a hurricane, uh, I, I thought that was the ultimate. 
thing that might kill this if it was FEMA, a federal agency saying thou shalt. I think there are rules they have to go by, minimal standards for emergency services. That's why we have this new fire station and rescue service here. But I don't know about the other. I don't know who would actually do that. Would that be um, Neil? Do you know the answer to that? The bridge is it's and P times an F. So that says it's a failure in evacuating in times of crisis. And it's already. You know, one of the things we have is a cascading effect. And I think this is one thing we also will probably make a question about to the county um, and to the state that the cascade is not just the midnight past beach road issue. The cascading effect starts up at the interstate when you get off to Clark Road and you come south to Stickney. And notice, by the way, that the only sign along that area of Sarasota yeah. County that says, here's the interstate exit to Siesta Key, one of the brown signs where the parks is and says you get off here to Siesta Key is right there at Stickney Point, where it's the most congested four lane onto our island. That is the only sign on the interstate that tells you to come that way. And that's what I've noticed for years. I'm going, why did they do that? I have no idea. But just keep that in mind. We're going to bring these things up because it starts there. And I don't know about if you all drive very often up and down the interstate if you have to work or not. I've had to go a lot on the interstate north and then back again. And I can tell you I don't use the interstate anymore. I use the old roads because it is scary out there. That's all, I'm just my personal awareness. So if you all want to get back on old 301 and 41 and at least have a way to leave if you need to, please do that. I do believe after the last two and a half years, I find them to be much safer, especially at night. You know, Catherine, nobody brought up, but they talk about the roundabouts and those of you that can use the roundabout, it's enormous. The, the traffic doesn't really pause for you to go north when it's good traffic. You kind of just have to take, hey, you know, once in a while you just have to, and that's what I'm afraid is going to have to happen here. You just kind of have to try to insert, or I've seen people sitting there waiting 15, 20 minutes or more, and the traffic never stops, and the people never give them a break to end with that intersection. But I do think if you're going to have pedestrians able to stop the traffic along the way, I mean, year, you know, the years back when we all worked together on the improvements that um, the FDOT was making to the roadways and the bridges at the time, you know, we were lucky because Bob was involved in this. And I had friends at FDOT that said, you know, there's a better way to do this. They wanted to build islands in the middle. Uh, some of you may remember that. They wanted to have pedestrian islands right in the middle of the road where you have your turn lanes. Nobody would have been able to move anywhere. I think we actually were told that we probably saved the state about a million dollars eliminating those islands from the design. So we did have an impact. I just want you to know, at one point in time, we did. So let's not, you know, anticipate that we can't. I guess that's what I would say right now. Remember that. Okay, what we wanted to go to next was, aside from the opening and closing, just comments about this presentation, was I wanted to be sure that if you had any other questions about things that we didn't get to the last time or today there was something else on your mind when you arrived here if not i will go and and, and have our have right one more question yeah you have one more question yeah this idea that the bikes would move from the bike lane into the pedestrian lane and that does not seem like it will actually work mm -hmm. you know i mean that's another issue i think we have yeah, we're already having trouble with the electric vehicles oh, that no. think they can either be on the sidewalks or not <laughs> so uh, these are a lot of big issues, and people have been quite scared and uh, worried. And I've seen actually five people in one of those street legal vehicles uh, deciding because traffic was so bad in one lane and there was none in the other, they went the wrong way, oh. completely down uh, the road onto the key on High Bowl because they could go there. They felt. Uh, with five kids in it, uh, driving down that way before the intersection of Ocean Boulevard and High Bowl, and they were driving the wrong way because it was an open road, whereas the rest of the traffic was held back. And then they went to the sidewalk, where, of course, we know people come to their mailboxes and things like that. So we have some dangerous circumstances, and it includes the bicyclists. Yeah. I just broke this, by the way. Question. 
Would you mind asking the people in the room? I'll make it more appreciate CFCT Association exploring options to stop this thing. Just explore the options to stop it. Okay. Did you hear what Jim said? He wants us to explore the option. Of how can we stop? How many this? people would? Yeah. yeah. Anybody want to raise your hand if you want to see us modify? I just know. Like to see yeah. CFCT. There are people that would raise their hands to look at some research of a different kind. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. It looks like you have at least at least two thirds, like the first time around when you're surveyed. Right? Is that right? We all. Yeah. That's good. All right. Thank you. All. One more question. Remember, at least a year ago, I'm going to your memory. There was a meeting where we were talking about the round about the room was packed. And the guy asked from whatever agency, who's in favor of this? Not one hand went up. <laughs> and, and I think it's important because one of our members said, I'm not against roundabouts, and I'm not either. I've driven in you know England off and on, but they're all used to that there. And, and I tell you, I'm scared when I have to go there, but I do it because that's the only way to get around. And, and sometimes it's a best situation, but not in areas where there's high pedestrian populations using the roads frequently. It's very scary. It's different. Yeah. Thank you. I, and we've, we've done this several times now. Okay. And Catherine, just yeah. again, I want to reiterate what Bob said, 62% of CSDQ residents said no. Right. To the, event, the intersection changing and no roundabout. 62. That's it. When we had the survey in those years past, it was two thirds of everybody that said, nearly two thirds, that said, you can leave it as it is or add some signalization, but don't make the roundabouts. And I believe that um, that was misunderstood because there was one category that said, do you want it? And I, I think that was a misunderstanding. We'll just give them that. And what we need to do is go back and ask again, look, what can you do to make this right? And what can you undo if it's not? And how, how we do it? I think, and we, I, should, I think we, should stop. we should make them either show us a model, you know, like the models that we have on, on uh, 60 point, where we build pedestrians and everything else. We have that whole thing now, right? We should say, you can't go forward. We should say to EPCOT, you can't go forward without this, without showing us a model of the whole damn thing operating in the real world. And that that would yeah, be a very great idea. That. By the way, just anyone that comes yes, up here, be careful. <laughs> this thing wants to go someplace though. Oh, good. Thank you. So, does anyone else want to uh, make a comment about that? Yes, Tom. I uh, on this whole thing, one thing I think that they kind of lost over is when they do their traffic counts, I think they should get somebody that has some idea what the traffic's like not on the island, not out in Never Neverland. <laughs> because I, I I can spout off things, but I do personally know that on Stickney Point near Midnight Pass, they did a study. And the people who did the study did it on February 1st. <laughs> And the uh, the study was done from two to four in the afternoon. And now, that was that, that is really not hard. quite the way it operates. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and so I think that they need to look at who's taken who's taken this um, studies and at least try to get somebody that has some idea what's going on and take them during the brush out during the uh, busy season, not. I, I had a comment, they never let me say it, was they could have got a lower traffic count if they would have took it at midnight. Yeah, midnight. Yeah. Okay. That was a good one. Well, let me let me go ahead and move on now. And I think we, we've got some, I think, pretty significant nuggets. They really are gold nuggets to take. And uh, we will do that. We will do that. We're going to do a summary of the comments from tonight. And I think also, just remember that I do believe when we have a fact-based argument and we have enough people that support that fact-based and there's absolutely no win in it truly for the people that they're serving, it does matter. It really does. We just don't always get it in the right timing that we would like. We have to go through the agony first, right? So that's where we're at. 